head coach of the Cleveland Browns um, here on the Rich Eisen Show. The first guest who I could uh, ever say a welcome, and I haven't seen you, I don't think, since Sports Emmy Night a couple of years ago in New York City. But Mike Pettin, you are on the program. Thanks for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. You bet. So, Coach, uh, three and two right now. How how is everything from your chair as the head coach of the three and two Browns? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, in the, in the what have you done lately world in the NFL, things yes. are good in my chair right now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, people ask me on Monday, how are you doing? And my usual response is, uh, I think you already know the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, since it's a very, very much a black and white uh, uh, business that that uh, that we're in, so it's it's uh, it's been great. Um, I'm very very fortunate here to have been able to, to to hire an outstanding coaching staff and and work with a GM like Ray Farmer and, and put this team together that um, you know have have really bought into what we're what we're trying to get accomplished. And, and fortunately for us, uh, we've gotten results on the field. How do you, as a first time head coach, lay down what what you want to have accomplished? How, how does one do that as a head coach in the NFL, walking into a situation like you did in Cleveland? Well, I, I think it's something where you, uh, you you can't be afraid to delegate. Uh, I, I think that the natural tendency at times is to is to try to micromanage it all. And, and just I've been very fortunate here that the, the pieces were really all in place in all the support staff areas, whether it was you know equipment, training room, uh, to the personnel department. That and it was really right from the beginning it was all hey what can we take off of your plate so you guys as a coaching staff can concentrate just on football uh and that was huge for us we were able to come in and and outline what we were looking for in in uh in players at certain positions uh in all three phases and uh we're able to to, to get a good part of the roster uh the way we wanted it uh and, and like i said the, the guys that are here have have uh have bought in and, uh, and and we're getting some results. And I, I imagine it, it was good to actually get a lead on somebody instead of the other way around, as you've had uh, happen a couple of times this year. I mean, that the, the the amount of comebacks you've attempted, and some work and some not, have have sort of been off the charts, Coach. When you think about yeah, it. Yeah, my uh, uh, my parents were both very thankful <laughs> uh, that they didn't have the the cardiac stress that that that, uh, that we put them through in, in some of the other games uh, and we joked with the players earlier in the week like hey there's there's no rule against winning you know by a by a couple scores but it was uh, that was a complete win for us it was nice to go out and you know we didn't get out of the gate great you know the first quarter we were I think we were down three nothing and then it just really kicked in uh, from there on and, and played played probably as three three consecutive quarters of, of the best football that we've played so far this year. Well, you mentioned your parents. Uh, you're now 323 career head coaching wins behind your dad, one of the more <laughs> legendary high school coaches in the entire country. How much have you leaned on the uh, coach from Central Bucks West High School? Uh, lean on him a lot, and it's uh, it's a very unique situation here that there's actually three coaches on our staff uh, that that uh, played for him. Chuck Drisbach, our linebackers coach, played for him in the 70s. I played for him in the 80s, and Jim O'Neill, defensive coordinator, played for him in the 90s. So he's figured out uh, everybody's email address. So I think he learned <laughs> early on that that uh, that if I didn't pay heed to his email, that that he he knows email addresses and he knows what CC means. So those guys get, uh, get a lot of the emails that were meant for me as well. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, Mike Pettin Sr. Uh, we're referring to. Uh, but in terms of the type of coach that you are, who, who is within you uh, uh, um, other than your dad? Let's put it that way. Well, I mean, it's a combination. I mean, I've worked for some some outstanding coaches throughout my career. I played for George Welsh at uh, Virginia. I, I got a chance to be a graduate assistant for, for Johnny Majors. Uh, I was when I walked in the door in, in Baltimore. I, obviously, Brian Billick was the head coach, but Mike Nolan was there. Mike Smith was there. Rex was there. I mean, just that whole group of of coaches that I was able to work with. Uh, over time, I worked with uh, with Chuck Pagano as well, and then to go to a um, you know to be there for John Harbaugh's first year and, and to learn from him, and then end up in uh, New York, obviously with Rex, and then then going to Buffalo to. To uh, to gain some some real valuable experience from Doug Marone. I mean, I, like I said, I've been very fortunate to have to have been able to work with some some outstanding coaches. And now you enter a week, coach, where you're expected to win. You you now have that uh, label. Um, certainly, with what you've been able to do through the first five games, and you're visiting a team that has zero wins this week. How do you approach that task? Well, it's it's uh, it's a challenge that we want to have. We welcome that. That early in the season, that when 
not a lot was expected from us, and, and that was that's a particular set of circumstances you have to deal with. And we always talk about uh, dealing with adversity and, and dealing with the, the the voices outside of the building and the and the negativity and, and people kind of wanting to compartmentalize us and cast us a certain way that we didn't want to live up to that. And now now the situation has flipped, uh, and and it's. Uh, it's one that we're going to have to handle. I mean, it's handling handling prosperity is is just as important as, as handling adversity. So that's really been the theme of our meetings. Uh, after every win that we've had, just talk about uh, the overreaction that that is accompanied with every <laughs> NFL game. You either overreact every win, you overreact every loss. And given how starved this city has been, this fan base has been uh, for success here, that that uh, that they're very excited and for and for good reason. And we understand that, but at the same time. Uh, the, that we know that we're going down there to play a, a very, very dangerous opponent uh, that has a lot of talent that just hasn't been able to to, to put it together. Uh, but that uh, it, it's a game that uh, we'll hear trap game all week. But it's important for our guys to go down there with with the right mindset and and go out and play. When was the last? Uh, it, why isn't Johnny Manziel your starter? Question. You've you've been uh, it's been it's been a while. Okay. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been. Uh, Probably since uh, just before the opener. Okay, just before the opener. And obviously, Brian Hoyer has a lot to say with, about that with his play. Um, w tell me something about him and what makes him tick that's allowed him to be successful in the manner that he has been. I just think it's his mentality, the approach he takes towards the game. I mean, he is, he is a gym rat, and he spent all that time in New England with Tom Brady. Uh, and he learned how to prepare for an opponent and how to how to go out and uh, you know sink your teeth into a game plan and go out and execute it. He learned he learned that from from the from the best in the business. So it's uh, it certainly shows up in in his play, and I think that's uh, his steadiness has has been key for us. That that he is very even keel. He doesn't get too excited when things aren't going well, uh, or things are going well, and he doesn't get too down when when. Uh, when when uh, things aren't going well, and that's, I think that's one of the reasons why we, we were able to overcome those two big deficits, once in, one in the opener and, and then again against Tennessee. I think he's very much a calming influence uh, for our guys. Uh, he's seen a lot of different looks and, and knows how to handle them. And that uh, I think that the players, the guys in the huddle, they're, they're going to reflect their leadership. And he's done an outstanding job with and, it. And on Sunday Night Football, we saw you know Victor Cruz go down and we saw – the anguish and how the players rallied around him from both teams. Uh, you uh, lost your center, Alex Mack, a guy who had never missed a snap in his entire career. You've lost him uh, to a leg injury for the season, coach. So uh, what, what has it been like for you to sort of throw your arm around to him and, and have the team move forward without a, it's such an important piece of your offensive line and team? No, it's it's uh, it it'll be a big thing for us to have to overcome. We, I can't understate that. And we also lost Armani Bryant, who people would consider to be our our, uh, our best pass rusher. Uh, and, and that's those are both bitter pills to swallow. They're, but at the same time, I told the team that uh, we would check the mail, but we weren't expecting any sympathy cards. Yeah, I mean, that's right. the way the NFL is. That there's no. Uh, there's no excuses. Injuries are a part of it, and good teams are the ones that can adapt and overcome and and uh, truly test the the uh, you know the cliche next man up. I thought we did an outstanding job of it in the game. John Greco uh, slid over from from guard uh, to center. Paul McQuiston came in and, and got us through the game at guard, and uh, and that's tough because that's a that's a two man switch instead of a straight one for one switch. That's difficult as it is to begin with. But I thought both those guys stepped up. Uh, and played well, but but uh, moving forward, it's it's going to be a big challenge for us. I mean, there, you, you don't just replace a Pro Bowl center. I mean, you you, uh, you understand that there's potentially could be some drop off, but but uh, we know that we have the right guys in the room to uh, to get it done and to be effective. Coach, I appreciate the time uh, for calling in. Have you met LeBron yet? Have you met him yet? I have. He came out to practice during training camp. Okay. My. Uh, my daughter was working camp as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she's she's 20. So it was uh, she could care less about me. She just wanted a picture with uh, with LeBron. So I know that worked. I, I think I got a few votes for Father of the Year uh, that day when I when I got her set up with a uh, picture with him. And then courtside seats. Now that's Father of the Year stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, that's no that's pressure next on her list. No pressure. But when you're three and two, this is when you get the asking. I'm not telling you how to do <laughs> your job here as Father of the Year, but I think right now. This would be good for you, Coach. That's funny. No, we're, we're just looking to get to four and two, and then maybe okay. we'll start thinking about that. Okay. Coach, thanks again. I appreciate you calling in. Rich, great. Thanks for having me. You bet. That's Mike Patton, the head coach of the three and two 
Cleveland Browns. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.